Welcome. This video provides the suggested answer key to the Unit 7 case exercise for the IDSS Targeted Threat Messaging course. Our exercise focused on a potential heavy rainfall event in northern Texas, as illustrated by WPC's Excessive Rainfall Outlook. It covers a pretty large area, as does the flood watch covering much of WFO Fort Worth's forecast area. We want to try to downscale the threat message with some lead time before flooding initiates. Here's the flood watch graphic from WFO Fort Worth with some great threat information. It covers a large area for a 12 hour period. Let's see if we can augment this with downscaled flood threat information focused on where and when flooding rain might initiate. Here's the 0Z Fort Worth sounding. It shows some favorable conditions for excessive convective rainfall. First, it has a very high precipitable water value over 2.3 inches. Second, it shows sufficient instability for deep moist convection, but not necessarily conditions that would favor considerable hail or significant damaging outflow, rather than simply excessive rainfall. It also shows a fairly slow west to east steering flow, so we want to watch out for any west to east oriented boundaries that could support training of convection over the same area. Satellite imagery through 1Z shows convection blowing up over northern Texas. The 1Z radar image on the right shows that convection is not far from Fort Worth, confirming favorable conditions for convection. Let's try to understand what is causing the convection in order to predict what will happen in the near term. The surface map shows some real trouble. Recall I said that we need to watch out for any east to west oriented boundaries that convection could train along. Here we see such a boundary, a very slow moving warm front just south of the convection seen on the prior slide. You'll also note pooling of higher dew points in the mid 70s along with 80 degree temperatures around the Dallas Fort Worth area. Without looking at anything else, I would have a pretty serious flood concern for this area. Let's look further, as perhaps the mechanism supporting convection will break down soon. The sun is setting after all. Here are the mandatory levels from SPC's mesoanalysis page for 0Z. At 850 millibars, we see a warm front indicated with converging winds over northern Texas. In particular, it shows winds perpendicular to the warm frontal boundary. This suggests that if the warm front is only drifting northward, there is likely isentropic lift on the cool side of the boundary. At 700 millibars and 500 millibars, we see a weak, slow-moving shortwave trough approaching the Dallas-Fort Worth area of northern Texas. Let's look closer at the surface. The mesoanalysis surface plot indicates the frontal boundary to be well south of Dallas-Fort Worth, with the metro area highlighted by the red oval. It seems that the frontal surface at 925 millibars is very close to Dallas-Fort Worth. Deep layer moisture convergence at 2Z appears to be focused just south of that area. Here are some heavy rainfall related mesoanalysis fields. The flow aloft is fairly weak, suggesting slow storm motion from west to east. We have an axis of anomalously high precipitable water values right over the Dallas Fort Worth area. Finally, the upwind propagation vectors are pointed west northwest to east southeast. Here are some NAM forecast soundings. The left one is north of Fort Worth and north of the 925 millibar boundary, while the one next to it is south. Fort Worth and south of the boundary. Both are moist soundings generating high precipitable water values and both have some cape for deep convection but not too much cape. Note the more elevated nature of the instability on the left sounding north of the boundary. Both suggest isentropic lift at and above the frontal surface. The far right image shows 2Z mixed layer cape from the SPC mesoanalysis page indicating favorable conditions for deep convection across northern Texas. Going back to radar and satellite imagery through 1Z, what do you think will evolve over the next few hours? From the data shown so far, including radar and satellite, the clues to a heavy rainfall event seem to be pointing to areas close to Dallas-Fort Worth. You were asked how you might message any perceived threats, such as to downscale what is provided in the larger scale flood watch. Where might flood producing rain be most likely to set up? Given that observational data are showing initiation close to the 925 millibar boundary, I would likely focus my messaging on that part of northern Texas, including Dallas-Fort Worth, indicating potential for excessive rainfall, especially given WPC's excessive rainfall outlook and the flood watch in place. The watch covers the entire forecast area, but my current messaging is zooming in to the area where the 925 millibar boundary is located, 
a little north of the surface front. From my experience, it's a dangerous pattern to have convection moving along an east to west oriented boundary while having persistent convergence due to low level flow perpendicular to that boundary and rising up the frontal surface to develop new upstream convection, resulting in a training pattern. My threat message focuses on the what, where, and when. Here's how I might design a social media graphic focused on the what, where, and when. My confidence level is moderate as the ingredients are set up to support heavy rainfall, but it hasn't developed just yet, but it's expected during the next two to three hours. This template can be set up in different ways. There's no single correct answer when it comes to template design. Through 3Z, my concerns are already starting to be confirmed. Compare the 2Z and 3Z radar images to see new convection on the western side of the cluster at 3Z. Note that the convection is well north of the surface front, closer to the 925 millibar boundary, where we have substantial convergence and lift of moist air. The environment appears supportive of efficient rainfall producers, which appears to be confirmed by the 3Z rainfall estimate at 3Z, showing amounts averaging an inch per hour, with totals getting up to flash flood guidance values as shown by the right image around the Fort Worth area. Excessive rainfall over a big population center is bad news. I would message Dallas-Fort Worth partners on the growing threat for flooding in that area and the likelihood of warnings being needed. We have a flood watch over the entire forecast area, but right now I'm downscaling my messaging to where flooding appears to be likely, which is only over a small part of the watch. Though not shown here, I could also message the minimal near-term threat of heavy rainfall over the southern part of the watch area where we may not have the ingredients for excessive rainfall, at least in the near term. At 3Z, the wrap shows a 700 millibar shortwave trough approaching the Dallas-Fort Worth area, while convergence and lift of moist air at 925 millibars continues across northern Texas. The HER has been consistently forecasting a slow-moving east to west band of heavy convection over far northern Texas, seemingly in line with the 850 millibar front. However, the 1Z HER run also shows convection further south around the Dallas-Fort Worth area, redeveloping over this area for several hours. Radar does not have much convection well north of Dallas, but it does over the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Despite the HER indicating heavy rainfall potential further north over the far northern counties of Texas, I'm not messaging that, given the lack of convection in that area on satellite and radar imagery. My focus continues to be the Dallas-Fort Worth area, given radar and satellite trends and the favorable environment for excessive rainfall. With rainfall reaching flash flood guidance values, a flash flood warning is issued by the Fort Worth office. So why isn't this sufficient downscale messaging for Fort Worth? The problem essentially boils down to lead time. The warning message is issued after several inches of rain have fallen and potentially after flooding has initiated, which is not necessarily a bad thing so long as you have other messaging focusing on supporting longer lead time decisions which is what this exercise has essentially focused on up to this point. My messaging for the Dallas-Fort Worth area began two hours earlier, around 8 p.m. local time. This reference map is provided to see where Fort Worth and Dallas are located in northern Texas. Currently, the heavy rainfall is occurring around the Fort Worth area, but our focus now starts turning to the Dallas area as the potential for heavy rainfall evolves eastward over time. By 3.30Z, we see a band of heavy rain setting up over the north side of Dallas. My message does not focus just on the continued flood event in Fort Worth, but also the likelihood of flooding initiating around the Dallas area. My social media graphic looks like this with focus on continued heavy rainfall and initiation of flash flooding over my highlighted area, including the Dallas-Fort Worth area. My confidence is now high given the latest radar trends. The main question remaining is how bad this event could get. During the next two hours, cores of heavy convective rainfall continue to slowly train over the Dallas area. My confidence in flooding in the Dallas area is increasing, and my messaging now reflects that. There are no flood warnings yet for Dallas, but I'm using targeted messaging to provide lead time before flood initiation on where I think such initiation is likely to occur, given the environment. Radar trends indicate that a flash flood warning for Dallas and surrounding areas is very likely. Here are the subsequent flash flood warnings for Fort Worth and areas south in the Johnson County on the left, and for the Dallas area on the right, given radar trends indicating excessive rainfall occurring in these areas. These are based on excessive rainfall that has already been occurring and flooding likely initiating. My targeted messaging focused on lead time ahead of the event to support longer lead time decisions. Here we have MRMS radar estimated precipitation images for 6C with ovals highlighting 
the areas of excessive rainfall where the warnings are issued for. We have three hour estimates of four to six inches of rain around and south of Fort Worth and across the north side of Dallas above flash flood guidance. The 6Z radar image on the right shows heavy rainfall tapering off around Fort Worth but continuing over the Dallas area and areas to the east. Let's take a look at some NAM forecast soundings at 6Z and 9Z around the Dallas-Fort Worth area. For the north side, we see similar conditions favoring heavy rainfall, including deep moisture, high precipitable water values, sufficient instability, and weak storm steering flow. For the south side of Dallas-Fort Worth at 6Z and 9Z, somewhat stronger low-level winds compared to the north side of Dallas-Fort Worth, suggesting low-level convergence and lift. Here we see hourly satellite images through 6Z showing continued redevelopment of convection on the western side of the cluster, highlighting the excessive rainfall event ongoing. Interestingly, we see another potential small-scale flooded threat over West Texas, just south of the Panhandle, with indication of back-building convection over time. Heavy rainfall events can be quite small-scale at times and can occur without a big storm system. Hourly radar images through 6E highlight continued heavy rainfall south of Fort Worth as well as across the Dallas area, particularly the north side of Dallas and areas east of Dallas where the rain only seems to be getting heavier. Given the favorable environment and the radar trends showing heavy rain sitting over the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I would likely enhance the strength of my messaging at 630Z, focusing on a flood event ongoing and likely to worsen given continued heavy rainfall, likely at least for a few more hours. Again, I focus on the what, where, and when, with messaging starting to focus on the upcoming morning rush hour, which will be impacted by the flooding. Given the seriousness of the situation, I would likely be directly calling emergency managers to provide information to support flash flood response. Such calls are another form of TTM. During the next six hour period from 6Z to 12Z, a band of heavy convection develops over far northern Texas as the earlier HER was suggesting, but the training of slow moving convection continued over the Dallas area and areas east, producing an additional three to six inches of rain during that period, which alone was up to double flash flood guidance. This was a major event for the Dallas-Fort Worth area, with rainfall continuing into the morning. Here are estimated event rainfall amounts with four to eight inches across and south of the Fort Worth area, and up to a foot around the Dallas area, with five to 10 inches extending in a band to the east of Dallas. To the right are some news articles about the event. Pretty impressive indeed. Focused on a one in a thousand year event for the Dallas area. It didn't come from a big upper trough or intense surface low, but rather from a weak upper wave, an east to west low level boundary to focus convective initiation and a pattern that set up training of slow moving convection. In this case, we downscaled our threat messaging from a large watch area to the Dallas-Fort Worth area where ingredients came together to support excessive rainfall in a manner to support not just immediate decisions but somewhat longer lead time decisions as well. Thank you for completing this exercise. We utilized TTM to downscale the threat and provide greater specificity and lead time compared to just watches and warnings. Hopefully you found opportunities to provide targeted flood messaging in this exercise. You were asked to target messaging on short-term flood potential within a large watch area. There were important environment clues suggesting that the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex could be within the area where training storms and excessive rainfall could occur. We targeted this by 1Z a few hours before the event really got going. You were asked about any messaging you'd provide during the one to two hour period after 2Z. The Fort Worth WFO issued a flash flood warning for Tarrant County, including Fort Worth at 3Z. You were then asked about any messaging you would provide during the one to two hour period after 3.30Z, during which a flash flood warning was issued for Southern Tarrant County and Johnson County to the south of Fort Worth due to very slow moving convection. Finally, you were asked about any messaging you would provide during the one to two hour period after 5.30Z. A flash flood warning was issued for Dallas County, including the Dallas area at 620Z. Talk to your local office Sioux if you have any questions about this exercise. You have reached the end of Unit 7. Thank you.